Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Game Theory Fundamentals. Episode 6, Finite Repeated Games. In this video, we will learn about repeated games and the differences between finite and infinite games and, and how to solve finite games using backward induction. So how do we know which strategy is the best for each player? Based on our previous lessons, we know one answer to this question that is using Nash equilibrium. However, not all games are played only once. Sometimes, the same game is repeated multiple times, either for a fixed number of times or indefinitely. In these cases, we call them repeated games. Repeated games are different from one-shot games, because the players can predict or observe the actions and payoffs of the previous rounds, and adjust their strategies accordingly. Therefore, the player's choices in different rounds are not independent, and the history of the game matters. Repeated games can be broadly divided into two classes, finite and infinite, depending on how long the game is being played for. Finite games are those in which both players know that the game is being played a specific, and finite, number of rounds, and that the game ends for certain after that many rounds have been played. In general, finite games can be solved by backwards induction. Whereas infinite games are those in which the game is being played an infinite number of times. A game with an infinite number of rounds is also equivalent, in terms of strategies to play, to a game in which the players in the game do not know for how many rounds the game is being played. Infinite games, or games that are being repeated an unknown number of times, cannot be solved by backwards induction as there is no, last round, to start the backwards induction from. To analyze and solve finite games, we can use the concept of subgame perfect equilibrium. Subgame perfect equilibrium is a refinement of Nash equilibrium, that requires the strategies to be optimal not only for the whole game, but also for every subgame of the game. Subgame perfect equilibrium eliminates the strategies that are not credible, meaning that they involve threats or promises that are not rational to carry out. One method to find the subgame perfect equilibrium is backward induction. Backward induction is a technique that involves starting from the end of the game and working backwards, eliminating the strategies that are not optimal for each player at each node. Here is an example of how to use backward induction to solve a finite game using the centipede game. Two players A and B alternately get a chance to take the larger share of the accumulated money, or pass it to the other player. Starting from the first player A, they can either take one or pass it to B, hoping that B will also pass so that A can take more than one, and so on. Each time they pass it, the sum of money increases. The game ends as soon as a player takes the money, or after a fixed number of rounds, which is usually 100, but for simplicity let's limit it to 6 as To find the subgame perfect equilibrium, we need to use backward induction. We start from the last round, where player B has to choose between taking 6 points for themselves and giving 4 to A or passing and getting 5 points for both. The optimal choice for player B is to take the 6 points. Therefore, we can eliminate the strategy of passing at the end. Knowing that B will choose to take it at the end of the game, for A, taking on the 5th round is better since she'll end up with 5 instead of 4. Hence, A, will take 5 points in the 5th round. And we can eliminate the strategy of passing it to B and so on and so forth. We can continue this process until we reach the first round, where player, A, has to choose between taking one unit or passing and getting zero units. Clearly, the optimal choice for player, A, is to take one unit and end the game. Therefore, we can eliminate the strategy of passing for player, A, in round 1. As you can see, the concept of repeated games and backward induction can help us understand the optimal strategies and outcomes in dynamic situations. However, not all repeated games have a finite and known number of rounds, and sometimes the players may have incomplete or imperfect information. In those cases, we need to use other concepts and methods to analyze the games, such as infinitely repeated games. We will cover these topics in the next episode. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.